All right. And now I am getting word that we are ready for our next run on SGDQ 2020 online. So here is Bing Cheng with Quest 64. Howdy, boys and girls. This is Quest 64. I am, uh, I'm Bing Chang, and I'm going to make mistakes live on the internet. I'm here with Jazzy, my commentator. Hello, everyone. I'm here just to help Bing Chang with this run. Hopefully, it's going to go very well. All right. Uh, we're going to do, we have a lot to talk about. I'll try not to, to slam it on you too fast, but. I'm ready to get started when you are, Eternal, if you'd like to count me down. I can definitely do that if you'd like. We'll start yes, from please. five. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, thank you. All right, so first things first, we start with changing our tech speed, and I messed it up already. You'll notice that I uh, got it to 50%, started moving it slightly to the right, and then press start. It actually moves in percentages of 50. Uh, so, a little bit of a time save there that I actually found within the last year. We've been running this game for so long, and little tiny things you still find here and there. So, the very first glitch we're going to do, hopefully it happens, it's called Death Dupe. If it does happen, it is going to absolutely blow your mind. Now, unfortunately, there's a pretty good chance that it won't happen because it's a, a pretty specific setup. Um, the short version of it is that uh, we're going to gain control while we're respawning, which is going to allow us to pick up a spirit way, way more than we should be able to. And I should mention, spirits are essentially rare candies in this game, except that you have to immediately use them. Picking up some bread for safety, and also for the death dupe, part of the setup. And uh, big, big important thing is this game always starts on the same RNG seed, so there actually is a bit of an RNG minute for the beginning of the run. Uh, assuming I don't mess anything up, we're going to get two Hellhounds to my right. I'm going to get out in the first turn. I'm going to get a singular Werehair. He's going to move once, not attack. I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to use Fireball one, and then I'm going to run out of the encounter, and uh, I will get a triple Werehair. It will. Uh, I will get out the first turn, and then I will get a singular Werehair, which will either be or not Werehair Hellhound, which will either be behind me, to my right, or in front of me. That's assuming I don't mess this up, and I am all kinds of nerves right now, so I probably will. All right. And this is uh, Mel Road, uh, our hometown. Us being a small 10-year-old child going out to uh, save our father. And quick save here. We're just setting our uh, reload point. If we didn't do this, we would have to start from the very beginning of the game after the potential death dupe, and you saw it's about a two-minute walk. Also, Eternal, if you don't mind, uh, when we get to the 10-minute uh, point, could you let me know? Yeah, I will do my Ass best. There's a little Assuming bit. Of, I haven't. Sorry, there's, a, there's a little bit of delay, but I'll be able to figure it out, so okay. I can let you know. Ten minutes. Thank you. Uh, just assuming we don't get death dupe, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. All right, this is the right first encounter, and I'm going to go down and slide out. All right, good. That's perfect. And then I should get a wear hair, singular wear hair, all the way around uh, this corner over here. Right about. Okay, good. We're going to get it right here. Cool, where here? I'm going to go first. I'm going to do a big move and slide. He's going to move and not attack. I'm going to use Fireball 1. That's part of the RNG manip. Uh, just the way the RNG functions uh, using an attack does affect it. I should get a triple where here right here. I'm going to go out and slide. I'm going to run around this corner the way I'm running, and I should get the Hellhound, I believe, to my right. No, no, we got the one in front of us. This is the second one. Now, this is kind of where the RNG manip falls apart because you have 360 degrees of movement, uh, your timing affects it, and it's it's hard to hold it when there's basically everything that affects the RNG. So at this point, it's a, it's essentially a guessing game. And we have to grind our HP town for Death Dupe uh, because we, we want to die. So for Death Dupe, uh, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do something called the Initiative Glitch. Uh, the initiative glitch is whenever you're moving, Brian gets into an encounter like you've seen. But when I open the spell menu, uh, uh, 
that's not great. 4 HP is not preferable, I want 3 or less. Uh, whenever you're moving, you can get to an encounter. And if I open the spell menu while Brian's moving, he actually doesn't stop moving right away like that. You notice I'm still walking. If I get into an encounter in that time, that's called uh, initiative glitch. And Jazzy, I'm going to let you take away the rest of this, uh, the explanation, because I need to focus for a moment. Sure. So, just a bit of backstory then. So, this game is called Quest 64 in America. But if you live in other parts of the world, this is actually called Elto Monsters in Japan and Holy Magic Century in other places. So you can pretty much see this is a RPG, turn-based RPG, and this came out in 1998. And actually came out in 1999 uh. in Japan as well. So backstory, so the story is set in Kelvin. Oh, do you want to... Yeah, I'd say that was all the setup for what Death Duke should have looked like, except the part that I didn't die. Um, so, essentially, you initiative glitch into an encounter, you have low HP, you get an encounter that's faster than you. I have. Oh, I still. I could still do that encounter, so let's try to get that again. I'm sorry. I don't want to mess this up. I want to die, I want to have my uh, item menu open. And when I hear the death audio, I'm going to use the healing item. The game goes, well, I guess you have control of your character uh, while you're dying. And if you get out of the encounter quick enough, you have eight seconds to just sit and mash away. And it, it looks crazy. Now, the spinning in here is just increasing our encounter chance. It starts really low, and the longer you walk, uh, the more you get an encounter. And I should mention, the Game Boy Color isn't a sequel, it's exactly the same game, it's just enhanced. There is a Game Boy Color Enhanced Demake, as we like to call it. And sorry, Jazzy. I'll you again. Sorry, concentrate. This is important. Right, okay, so as you can see, this place is called Keltlin, and our protagonist is called Brian. Or if you play on Japan, it's called Jean Jack. Or if you play on Holy Magic Century, it's called Aaron. So the story is quite straightforward. It's essentially Brian sets off to find his dad. He's off to get the L Tell book. And then, pretty much as we go along, we'll try and fill in the story as we, as we keep going. So, since the last time this was a, a, a GTQ, I think it was SGTQ 2013, which was a race between Kirk, Q, and Peaches. Let me cut you off real quick there. Yeah. So what happened there is the first frame of movement for the initiative glitch, you have to be moving uh, before I can open the spell menu. And that's, you can get an encounter in that one frame, and that's what happened there. So I couldn't do uh, the initiative glitch uh, setup like I would normally. Getting closer. Yep. So now that we have, we have more than six agility, so the only enemy that we can use is a Hellhound, or as we like to call him, Hacker Z. Fiery Puppy. Such a finicky trick. It is. So I was just saying, so the last time this was run at GDQ was in SGDQ 2013, which was a race between Kirk Q and Peaches. Uh, that time though, that was playing the, on the Japanese version actually, and as you can see, we're on the, the US version this time. So again, during the round, I'll explain the differences. There's quite a few actually, as Bing Chan mentioned in this interview earlier. But in terms of the world record for this, so back in 2013, this the world record for this category was 231.02 by Kirk Q. 2.22? Uh, no, that was that came a bit after. That came like uh, a year after, okay. yeah. So, Sorry. and then since, well, well, seven years later now, the, the time's actually down to 121.18 by Bing Chan himself. So this is one of the main reasons as well, this having this death do glitch. And 
other things were found as well, actually, around 2015-2016 by Script Epic. So, like I said, you'll you'll be able to see in this run a lot of glitches and, and see why we can save almost an hour, well, more than an hour, actually, from the run. It doesn't matter, I'm faster than them. All right, we'll do, we'll do, like, one more encounter. Yeah, I mean, we almost got it. Uh, just unfortunate that that Parasalt missed. If that Parasalt didn't miss, that first setup would have been sufficient for an okay dupe. Uh, but we got a bit unlucky with that miss. One last encounter. We should probably, that'll probably give us to about the 10 minute mark, I think. Okay, we got one. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we are at about 10 minutes right now. That's a death dupe. That wasn't a good death dupe. That was an all right death dupe. Um, I am going to load a save, though. You know what? We're not going to load a save. We're not going to load a save. That's a death dupe. All right. Well done. So, That's... thank you. The very first thing, I'll explain death dupe in a second, but we're going to come, we're gonna come back to it, because the very first thing I'm going to do after this is something called the agility glitch. Uh, the agility glitch is incredibly easy and super straightforward. Um, so if you are faster than an enemy you get into an encounter with, uh, in the US version only, you can skip your turn before the encounter fully loads just by hitting A and Z. And I just did it. It's really, really easy. Uh, you have like a full second and a half to do it. What happens is the game thinks that you moved in an encounter from your previous coordinates to your current coordinates and gives you agility based off that. So that's important uh, because it gives you a huge amount of agility for one, but also because that's the most amount of agility you get is from uh, encounters. Uh, in, in areas there are no encounters, you get a little bit of agility. Areas where there are encounters, like the overworld here, you get a bit more. But in encounters, you get a huge amount of agility. So we're going to take advantage of that. There is an agility route that we're going to be using, and you're going to see me going in and out some areas, uh, particularly the next dungeon. I'm going to go out the, uh, back and forth a bunch. Now, the other thing I'm going to you're going to see me do, like I'm doing right here, is something called Soul Searcher 2. This is our MP grind spell. Uh, we want to have 21 MP by the time we get to Guilty, uh, and the way you get MP in this game is by landing spells. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Soul Searcher 2 always hits all enemies. Um, it's actually turns out that the spell's bugged, so it always technically hits. It's the, the the effect of the spell, whether that hits or miss. That's completely irrelevant because the spell hits, so we get experience based off that. Every time I'm I'm going a little in reverse here. Uh, for MP grinding, so every time a spell hits, so like Wind Cutter 2 use hits uh, shoots three things. Each of those, if each of those hits, you get MP experience. And it's the same idea with Soul Searcher 2. For each enemy and encounter, you get experience. Now, Death Dupe. What you just saw that was bonkers. So, low HP. You want to get into an encounter with an enemy that's faster than you. You want to do an initiative glitch. Uh, on top of a particular spirit, the one you saw, about a second into the encounter, I'm going to use a spell. You saw the enemy teleport across the arena. That is just a side effect. It is super convenient that it happens, though. I'm going to open the item menu, uh, hopefully be standing out of the encounter. In that case, I wasn't, but I was close. Uh, I want to take lethal damage with the item menu open. Uh, once I hear the death audio, I will then use a healing item. The game goes, excuse me, what? And you have control of your character while you're respawning. And if you're out of the encounter, you have a full eight seconds to just sit there and mash. So a task could theoretically get 96 spirits. My personal best is 71. Uh, that was, uh, what was that? That was a 37, 36? 39 and, no, uh, 30, and a 7, so 46, I think. Oh, 46. I can't do math right now. So that's not bad. Uh, if this was a, a serious attempt, I would actually go with that, but I would be uh, probably a bit more aggressive in general. All right, so you notice our agility is now up to 15. We started with uh, 5 at the very beginning of the run. I want to have 16 going in here, which looks like we're actually going to hit, which is... <laughs> super unusual. If I get an encounter right here, I'm going to take the time to get. Oh boy. That was the, the death dupe is really the uh, the reset point for any percent. I've, I've spent hours 
uh, just resetting there. All right, we have 16 agility. I'm going to do the old exit return clone here on these spirits. It looks similar, except I don't have to do all that fucky setup. I just cast exit or return. You can get up to six spirits out of that. So I guess I should talk about how the mashing uh, functions. So for picking up spirits, it's one frame to just press A or Z to grab the spirit. And then it's an additional frame to just uh, place the spirit. So if you could alternate frames, that would be optimal. Optimal. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I am actually going to do a defense grind um, because marathon safety. If we didn't do a defense grind, there's a couple enemies in the end game that are going to be faster than us that would kill us in one turn and we have zero control over it. So uh, let's talk about how defense and HP work. In this case, defense is the amount of hits you take. It doesn't matter how much the damage is, it's just the amount of hits. Uh, HP, same thing, it's the amount of hits, but it's also, uh, if you melee an enemy, you also get a bit of MP experience, or uh, you get a bit of HP experience. You also get MP back, one MP. It also only takes effect when you leave the battle as well, so even, even so. Oh, you talk, uh, so actually, oh, yes and no. Yeah, gone. For, so when your defense goes up, it, uh, specifically defense and agility, if they go up in an encounter, the game doesn't check that until either you leave an encounter or you um, you use a spell or an item that affects that defense. So I used spirit armor uh, and that changed my defense, but now you notice he's doing one and two damage. If I hadn't used spirit armor when I did, he would still be doing three and two damage, even though my defense has gone up to the point where he does one or two damage. So unfortunately, because we didn't get a high enough death dupe, I'm going to be a little weaker than I would like to be. That's not a big deal. We're just going to be a little safer. But that's the thing, though. Death dupe allows us to have spirit armor early as well, and unless we do a lot of stuff earlier than, yes. than we would be able to. Yes, yes, yes. Death dupe allows us to make Solvering an absolute joke. For those of you who played this game, you probably remember the first boss Solvering is, uh, he's mean. He hits really hard. Uh, he also doesn't like to miss. So there's an emote that I have in my channel uh, that's called Solverrect because uh, the old any percent he used to destroy us a lot of the time. Nowadays, uh, Solvering gets destroyed. So the, it's funny how the emote has uh, changed meanings. Yeah, that used to be the biggest reset point for, for a run around the 15, 15, 20 minute mark, I guess, up to that point. Mm -hmm. But now, now it's now it's death tube, which is a lot e a lot earlier, but obviously a lot harder to to achieve as well. Yes. Feeling to be safe. Okay. And this running in and out here, this is uh, our agility grind. I'm gonna go to specific spots. Uh, no, it's the next tree. Uh, go to this tree because this is the end of where you can get encounters. And I'm just gonna run around this tree. If you notice, that battle arena, the shape that it is, is very specific. It's always going to be that same spot, because this is the end. And I'm going to always cast Soul Searcher 2 when I get out of the encounter. And if you notice me tap start real quick, I'm just looking at what my agility is right now. It's 23. I know exactly where I need to look on the screen, so I double tap it to waste as little time as possible. And this is the agility grind, so I'd like to take a minute to stop talking. So if you have any donations, Sure. Before we get to donations, I've been asked to uh, ask you what your preference for runner donation would be, if asked. Um, whatever the next donation is, that is uh, going to be funny. <laughs> okay. Well, there's there's your answer. And yes, we do have a few we do have a few donations coming on in. We have a fifty dollar donation from Kazakishi who says, "Big mouths are so slow. Rockies are super slow too. Go fast, GDQ." That's another haiku there. Yo, Kazi, thank you. I, I, sorry, let me. I, I forgot about one quick thing that we didn't actually see a big mouth, uh, but you see him on the wall behind me. Uh, in my stream, there's a little bit of lore for Big Mouth. Uh, they use Water Pillar 2, and that's the only attack they have. Uh, to us, they kind of replaced Hydration Bot, because to us, Big Mouth is just a big puppy in an alligator slash hippopotamus, uh, hip hippopotamus body uh, that just wants to make sure you're hydrated. And unfortunately, he's a little too strong for his own good, so he, uh, he hurts us. But he doesn't mean it. He means well. You 
got any more. Oh, yeah, there are plenty. There are plenty. Uh, we have a $5 donation from Kitsune of Dreams, who says, let's go, bing, get that death dupe. Stay strong and say no to pinheads. <laughs> Thank you. So pinheads are an uh, enemy later on, which used to kill the run, I guess? Oh, no, they, they still kill the run. Uh, they are <laughs> yeah. the... They are the fastest enemy behind Mammon, the final boss. Uh, and in a normal any percent run, we don't grind enough agility or defense to survive them. So if you see one at the end of the run, you've basically wasted an hour of your life. That happened quite a lot with, with you, actually. <laughs> yes, it's watching. happened yeah. a great many times. I want to get to 63 HP defense, and if you got any more donations, go ahead. We have a big one here. We have a $200 donation from Ace69, who says, super excited for this Quest 64 run. I loved this game when I was younger, less than three. Thank you. For Yo, that. Ace, thank you. Sorry. Thank oh, you're, oh, you're fine. Thank you for the $200. Those are, those are some guys that uh, are in the Quest community. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. If you notice, I, I guess something good to mention right now is that the, it, you know, 3D uh, movement in a battle, you can actually dodge spells and the like. And I'm actually, in this case, I'm moving in a particular manner to get hit by all three of the Windcutter 3. But if I really wanted to, I could actually dodge all of it as well. So we've, we've hit the uh, defense HP grind for the first part. There's going to be one more little later, but that's going to be sufficient for now. Normally we wouldn't even do this, but if we really wanted to, we'd go to like 59, because um, that would be enough for silvering. And 63 is really just to make the second defense and grind a little bit faster, because uh, we use yellow bats and they hit really hard. Just to mention as well, we actually missed the first town as well, Dondoran. Oh ah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's way up there. Yeah, that, that, that castle that, that in the castle. distance. That's that's Dondoran. We're not gonna go there. Uh, speaking of Dondoran, uh, I'm sure some of you know that this game is uh, not regarded very well. And one of the big reasons is the game was released early, and and uh, there's actually supposed to be three playable characters. Uh, one of which uh, I always forget her name. Flora, Fiora. Aura? Something like that. Uh, the princess of Dondran Castle, she was actually supposed to be a white mage type character. I, I'm sorry, I can never remember her name. I'm not sure either, I'm afraid. I could bring up my guidebook and look. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's our agility looking like? 37, I won Flora, thank you. Um... We're almost done with the agility grind here. I want to have uh, 44 going in, if I can, because I want to have 48 going into Solvering. That'll put us at a nice spot. We want to have, uh, specifically, we want to have 59 by a particular point in Call Hazard. We're going to do the very first Out of Bounds. Got a couple more donations, go ahead. Absolutely, we have a $15 donation from Frog Finder, who says, loved Quest 64 as a kid. I was just terrible at it, never got past the first boss. Good luck, Bing Chang. Don't forget about the Jade Kanin. Thank you. We have a $25 donation from Sail Quaza, who says, I have fond memories of renting Quest 64 as a child and playing it with my dad. So glad to see it being beaten far faster than my childhood self did. Nice, thank you. I have fond memories of dying to silver and over 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 again. And also of the uh, the old tip where you type uh, you tape down your uh, your thumbstick in a town and just let your character run in circles. Thankfully, we don't have to do that now. We can just do the agility glitch and completely skip all that. <laughs> Saves a little bit of time. We're picking up these boots for way later in the run. This is going to make another out of bounds really, really easy to set up. Our agility is, uh, scraped my teeth. <laughs> our, our agility, our agility is really good. Um, we're gonna make our way to Solvering and just, uh, show them what's what. Correct me if I'm wrong, this is one of the first games that required a memory card as well, right? Uh, maybe? I don't actually know that. 
because I didn't use the own one and I had to play the first part of this game many times <laughs> until I actually got a memory card myself. Where I, I think I played this a lot, uh, Town Memory Card as well, but that's also, that was not the smartest. So I'm going to fight this encounter, uh, because of the, wow, okay. I'm gonna fight this encounter because of the bats right here. They have a drop that I want, and there's a 25% chance I've just missed them a bunch. That was terrible. Um, uh, they have a drop that I want called Ceiling's Bell. I didn't get it. It's a 25% chance to get an item drop, uh, for enemy. I don't know, it's... It's something really small. Yeah, um, I'm killing them. Yeah. It just, yeah, it just makes a uh, an out of bounds later very very easy. Let's actually line this up like this and hit both of them this time. Look at that. I think I know what I'm doing. There we go. That's the item I want. I'm not gonna kill any more enemies. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna kill any more enemies. I'm not really gonna go out of my way to do it. So these are three bats. I am going to take the time to Soul Searcher 2 because I want the MP, even though we're not really going to need all the help, uh, especially with the added defensive uh, grinds. It's just going to give us all that extra MP that we would normally need to get a bunch of encounters for. All right, so our agility is a little low. There is uh, a bunch of backups. Oh, nice, a five bat encounter. You, the most you can get is six, and you'll notice uh, with a bunch of enemies, oh, I just cast the wrong spell, uh, it gets a bit laggy. Uh, so I'm turning the camera by holding B to face away from them. Like this, and you, it's a lot less laggy. We're gonna do that Classing Soul Searcher uh, 2 as well. I should have cast twice, but I'm talking and not paying attention to the buttons I'm pressing. Alright. You and we're agility glitching this entire way, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned about the items as well, so... You only get the drop if you don't have it in inventory already, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Yeah, Unless I fixed you... that in the JP version. Yeah. So... If you have... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so JP actually came out a year after this, actually. So Quest 64 and Holy Magic Century came out first in 1998. And Quest actually came out a year later. Well, I'll tell Monsters, I guess, came out a year later mm -hmm. in Japan. And... There's a lot of changes, actually. They, they polished what is this game for what it is. Uh, they Every time your stats go up, you get a nice shiny color thing. Um, let's see, red for HP, blue for MP, green for agility, and yellow for defense. Yeah. It flashes that color whenever that stat goes up. Our agility is good, and you notice there's a spirit there. We'll come back to that. We're going to clone it when we leave. So we're heading towards the first boss now, Solvering. Yep, this is Solvering. Enough spirits? I don't remember. Uh, I mean, uh, for Avalanche. I don't think I do. I think I have 22. Or 23. Great. Alright, so he has 200 HP. We're gonna have to hit him. I could. Now I'm gonna have to hit him three times. So I'm gonna use Ice Nice twice. I'm gonna put him at about 110 or so, and then Water Pillar 3, and he's dead. So if you remember him being hard, uh, he's kind of a joke now. It's great, I love it. And pick up this uh, mint leaves a little bit later. You yeah, silvering, he's a joke. You probably saw as well. We also gain HP as well when we beat the boss. So yep. depending on which boss you get, you get a certain amount. In the Japanese version, you get MP as well. So that makes this a lot easier. I'm so jealous of the JP version. They've made so so many nice little polishes, but they also ruined the two big glitches for this. They uh, they kind of fixed agility glitch. You can no longer just skip your turn when the encounter loads. And they also fixed cloning. Uh, there's a forced animation every time you pick, pick up a spirit. So exit return cloning, you can get maybe two, whereas US, you can get six. Death dupe, uh, US, 96. JP, 17, maybe. Oh, this is another exit, uh, clone. I'm just aiming for four there. Another four, and we're looking good. Uh, our agility is fine. If I have to, I can get... There's some backup spots where I can go out of my way a little bit to get a bit of extra agility. And I don't think we're gonna need to do that, but it really depends on the encounters we get along the way. I want encounters at the optimal points uh, along the path to maximize the different distance between encounters giving us the most agility. I see somebody mentioned Aiden Chronicles. I highly suggest everyone go look up the, the speedrun notes for Aiden Chronicles. 
there is literally a page of the, how the game can crash. It is really unfortunate, but also super hilarious. We're making our way downtown, going fast, or walking fast, I'm sorry. Uh, just gonna, along the way, we're gonna agility glitch and we're gonna soul searcher too the entire time. Uh, fortunately, not out on the first turn. Turns, there we go. And since where Death Dupe was not super strong, I'm actually gonna go out of my way to grab a couple extra spirits here and there. They're kind of in the areas of like 10 seconds or so. Uh, most of them are not serious time waste. Uh, but we are, with that Death Dupe, we're, we're plenty strong. Yeah, so the elements actually cap at 50, so you can see on the bottom left that they all cap at 50, so in total there's 98 spirits in the overworld, and then the other 98 you can get from, uh, well, fighting monsters, I guess, and getting experience. Or cheating, and using glitches. Death, or death dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you notice that I stopped putting uh, water in past 40, and that's because that's really more than enough. Uh, we, our heal is strong enough, we have all the spells we want. Escape, Soul Searcher 2, Heal 2, Exit, Return, uh, all that fun stuff. And then we're gonna start putting stuff into Earth. So we could have just put stuff into Earth immediately, except that uh, Solvering is Earth. Even though we kill him really quickly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just makes him a little bit safer overall. We don't have to worry about Avalanche RNG. And by the time we get to Zelfs, we'll have enough Earth to be using the spells that we care about anyway, which are in uh, no particular order, Magic Barrier and Avalanche. Uh, Magic Barrier makes us invincible to all spell damage for at least two turns. It can go up, I think it can go up to four turns in the US version, but it's super unlikely. Um, and then the OP of all OP spells, Avalanche. So the highest base damage spell is Avalanche. The second highest base damage spell that we have access to, of course, is Large Cutter. Large Cutter's base damage is, I believe, 420, and Avalanche's base damage is 440 or 460. Uh, but the difference between those spells is Large Cutter is exactly one projectile, and Avalanche is a lot more. <laughs> you can hit a boss up to seven times. So just that base damage, seven times. It's a little bit strong. Just a, just a tiny, tiny bit. And you actually get it quite early as well in there. Yep. Yeah, you get Avalanche at 24, you get Magic Barrier at 36. We're also going to make uh, use of a couple different spells. Uh, Spirit Armor you get at 14, and then Spirit Armor 2. I actually do not remember where you get that, uh, what level. I want to say it's like probably around 20. Um, and then we're also going to use something called Confusion. Confusion is... Uh, Pretty standard RPG spell. Whenever you take damage, you get MP back. It's usually not necessarily called confusion, but uh, getting MP back from taking damage feels a pretty standard RPG spell for this type of game. Spirit Armor to level 2 is 21. You got a 21. 21? Yeah. I was close. A good guess. I actually didn't know. <laughs> I know Soul Searcher 2 is 34 water. So that that's why we kind of go to 40. A nice even number. And also we have Soul Searcher 2. Yeah. I should mention, there's a, I think there's a couple RPGs that were released on the N64, specifically the US. Uh, Quest is the top five. I think there's only four. Um, so take that as you will. That's my favorite description of the game. Top five RPG on N64. Which is strictly true, I guess. Yeah. All right. So we zoom out here. Turns out you can zoom out if you press L in the overworld. So it doesn't lag. So this save here is more muscle memory than anything, and also because I want to be a little safe. This isn't much as safe as it is a quick save to kind of set our reload point. In a normal any percent run, we would uh, use that as a death warp spot. There is a new glitch that was discovered recently that uh, kind of eliminated that, but it's not faster than the original route. And we're, I've been I've been using it in runs just to just to go a little bit faster. So this is an area where I'm going to try to look away from the enemies, but there's just spots that if you, even if you look, no matter what direction you're looking, it's going to lag because of the water flowing under the map. It's pretty unfortunate. And we're going to head over to Larpool. We're going to grab some blue wings. They are your town teleportation item. Uh, it's just going to be a little quicker to get back here after we beat up on Zels, the next boss. Yeah, so every town has a, has a wing, different colored wing, and then you just use it and then you get teleported back to the town. 
Yep. And white, yellow, white for, oh, sorry, white for Melrode, yellow for Dondarin, blue for Larpal, green for uh, Normoon, red for Limelin, and black for Brunel. Yeah. If you use A, you can just get it again, so it's pretty much infinite. Are there one time use items, you just have to go back and grab it again. Alright. So. You didn't really notice this before, but I'm going to heal and then talk to somebody. It actually cancels the healing animation a little bit faster. It's kind of the same as, like, uh, something that used to be used a lot more in the run. Not so much now because we heal for so much, but when our heals were a lot weaker, weaker uh, we would do something called heal chain canceling. You'll still see it if I cast heal. Uh, you just keep casting heal over and over and over again, and at the end of casting heal, you actually just mash A and Z, and Brian's animation of shaking his head like there's nothing there is faster than watching uh, the heal animation play out, and you get control of your character just a little bit faster. Uh, it saved probably in a glitchless run, it saves maybe 15 seconds over the entire run due to the amount of, amount of time you have to heal. This run, uh, not so much. It saves time, but, you know, is what it is. All right, we're making our way to Call Hazard the, for the first Out of Bounds. Uh, we're going to do something called the Battle Arena Clip. Uh, if you notice, our, there's two battle arenas. There's the big one, the yellow one, that's the entire battle arena, and then there's the blue one, which is our little movement uh, arena in the battle arena. We're going to take that blue area and set it up in such a way that we can walk out of bounds. And I will warn you, because it is going to be very, very quick, blink and you miss it quick. Get a dono or two? Oh yeah, we have a lot. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Zach God, who says, Great death dupe time. Good luck, Bing. Hecker C. Thank you, Zach. We have a $50 donation from Epidel, who says, Had to donate during Quest 64, a game I loved as a kid, but never beat without a game shark. I've already learned a lot about its mechanics I never knew. Looking nice. forward to seeing it destroyed. Thanks for all the runs and to everyone behind the scenes at GDQ. Thank you for that dono. Yeah, I think the first time I actually beat this game, I used the Game Shark as well. <laughs> I never, I didn't beat it legit until I was probably in college. Same for me, actually. I beat this when I was quite the older as well. This was actually a really difficult game. If you didn't use water, which gives you healing, and like I said, mm -hmm. Earth for Magic Barrier Avalanche, this game is actually really difficult, in my opinion. Yeah, this game this game suffers from no explanations. If you balance your elements, you're going to have a bad time. I There's did. really no other way around it. I did that But if you later. maxed one, eh, you'll be okay. <laughs> Fire is definitely the worst, uh, because second, the later half of the game, all the bosses <laughs> have fire or are uh, half, or they take half damage from fire, so fire gets really, really, really fast. Wind is just solid throughout the entire run, but just nothing compares to Avalanche. All right, so we probably will have to do the extra encounter out of bounds for a little extra agility, but that's not a big deal. Um, the next singular Skelebat, I'm going to do a bit of another defense grind. It's going to be faster because their animation is faster. They also hit way harder, so I have to make sure that my Spirit Armor 2 uh, stays up pretty much constantly. Got another dono? Yeah, sure do. We have a $25 donation from Nick12, who says, My wife has fond memories of hating this game. We are <laughs> happy to see it being torn to shreds. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> I totally understand that. <laughs> This is, a, this is another defense grind. We're going to go to 82, uh, and that's going to be it for the defense. That's going to make us safe for the rest of the run, especially with the extra HP we're going to get from bosses, including Shilf. Shall we talk a bit more about the defenses then, I guess? Sure, go ahead. So we mentioned about defense earlier as well. So defense actually increases twice as fast in the Japanese version. And then agility, the stats is, too. Yeah, agility is faster as well. Uh, we mentioned how, how Solvering as well. He actually deals less damage as well in the JP version. Uh, also, crits as well. Chris has been added to the oh, game, yeah. so... Do, you, do we know roughly what the chances are? Okay. I have no idea what the chances are for crits, but it's enough for the bosses to hit you with it and for you to never see one. Yeah, so they do... Crits essentially do 1.5 times damage than you normally do. And you also have a uh, double staff attack 
in this version you can only melee once per turn, but like in the JP version, if you're mashing A and Z, you can do a double stab. It looks yeah, it, it looks kind of goofy, you know, N64 animations. Yeah, if you don't want to use spells, you can actually use the, the staff that Brian's holding to, to attack. They enough. also uh, buff the drop rate, so even if you have two of an item, you can still get an uh, item drop, which is super nice. You also get MP from bosses, stats are faster, uh, they nerf some of the bosses as well. Yep. Um, they, they also, there's a nice little thing, if you have 50 of an element, um, any, I don't know if it's any, but most spells that have um, projectiles shoot more projectiles. Uh, so like Avalanche, you could hit with a max of 7. Uh, but in JP, you can hit with a max of 10 if you have 50 Earth, which is just bonkers to me. Also, the battle arena is more circular as well, so if, I think it makes our bands clipping a little bit harder. It's about the same. About the same, okay. It's just slightly different spots. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Something we haven't seen yet is uh, something called uh, victory animation canceling. Every time Brian wins an encounter, he jumps up in the air, and you watch this animation and you're super happy, but there's a couple frame window at the end of that, uh, when you win the battle, where you can start to cast a spell. And if you cast healing fast enough, uh, it'll cancel out of that victory animation. Uh, the, the only side effect is that the music doesn't load back in. So you get this eerie silence and Brian's feet running. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna get it to happen because I'm probably not really gonna fight anything at this point uh, going forward. It's a bit unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. Ooh, our agility is not looking good. Definitely gonna have to pick up the extra encounter. So we're coming up on the out of bounds. This is, uh, like I said, the battle arena clip. There is a particular spot or setup that I use for this. We want an encounter right? No, actually, this will work. This will work. So this encounter can kind of spawn in different spots, but we want to be. There's this little black line over here to the right uh, that we want to use as the setup point. I have, I think I have 58 agility right now. So I need to, this line is normally where I'd set up, but I need to be a little bit to the left, right about here. I cast Soul Searcher 2 because I want MP. Now, if you want to see an out of bounds, I suggest you look right now because this is a blink and you miss it type of thing. We are going to walk into this corner and I'm going to get pushed out of bounds like that. Oof, we're out of bounds. It is very easy to do as long as you know what kind of angle you need. And I'm, I was serious when I said we use Brian's walking animation. If you run into that corner, it will push you out. But if you walk, the game doesn't really handle it well. So yeah, now we're out of bounds. We can get encounters out of bounds only if we walk close to the path. So we're going to be just far enough away to not get um, encounters. I am going to grab an extra one because my agility is a bit low. Uh, and that's, that's it. What color do you think this is? I gotta know, guys. To me, it's kind of a matcha green. But what, what color do you think this is? And if you got donos, now's a good time. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty. There's a lot of love coming in for this one. We've got a $25 donation from Brandoid, who says, loved this game as a kid. I'm happy to see it in this marathon. Go, go, go. Thank you. We have a $15 donation from Augie, who says, Quest 64 is right alongside Glover as one of those N64 games I rented, remember, but never owned. Nice to see it again. <laughs> nice. I actually owned Glover as well. I must I must have the like the all the uh, interesting games for the N64 when I was a kid. <laughs> games with cult followings. Right. <laughs> You got more. You got another uh, probably like 50 seconds. Okay. We have $20 from Kana Rican who says, I have to donate for the first N64 game I ever owned and eventually beat, even if the Mammon fight took two days. Nice. Thank you. Oh, there's the vine everyone remembers. It's over there. We're not going to, fortunately, we're not going to walk along it. Uh, I should mention when we're out of bounds, there are some hitboxes that we're using to raise or lower our height just so we can see some areas. Uh, if you got more, keep on going. All right. We've got a $10 donation from, from Carrot Kuro who says, Yo, Bing Chan, imagine my surprise when I checked the GDQ schedule on a whim and you were the next runner. Finish that quest, man. Yo, thanks, Carrot. Uh, he's actually a dev of a game called Xander the Monster Morpher, another game I run. I highly suggest you check it out. It is a super fun game. And he's a cool dude. 
Thanks, man. We've got a $15 donation from Bowie the Hero who says, Love the headgear, Bing Chang. It's very fetching. Keep rocking that holy magic century. Less than three. <laughs> Yo, Bowie. Thanks, my dude. Uh, he is a big fan of the PAL name of this game, and I have to agree. The US version, Quest 64, kind of boring. Uh, JP Elto Monsters, getting better. And then the PAL version, Holy Magic Century. Sounds like it's epic. I mean, it looks it epic. Is. Look at the screen now. <laughs> right? <laughs> but thank you again, Bo. I really appreciate it, my dude. So we reckon this saves around two or three minutes over. Uh, yep. It depends on encounters. If we, if we got no encounters, it'd only save about a minute, but because we're definitely going to get encounters in the walk the rest of the way, uh, it saves like two or three minutes. I should note, when you're out of bounds, you can't activate doors, but the hitboxes of cave entrances or cave exits actually overlay just slightly, which is super convenient for us, and we can go right back in bounds. All right, so I'm gonna grab a couple spirits in the wheat field. And I'm going to grab an extra MP item just for a little bit of safety. In this windmill. And uh, coming up is the hardest trick in the game. Uh, I know I said Death Duke was, was hard, but this is this is actually the hardest trick. Uh, shoutouts to Perk Q and Peaches, uh, some of the OG runners of this game. Uh, they always got this, this trick first try. I'm going to try to get it first try. It's, uh, it's really tough. We'll see if we get it. Um, so here it goes. Perfect. Fence clip. First try. Awesome. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Um, we're going to go into Windward here. We're going to clone this first spirit. And then we're going to make our way over to Zels. All right, we have 42. We're really good. Uh, minimum going into the Zels fight in terms of spirit setup for later on some stuff. We want to have at least, I believe, 37 or 38 from what I remember. Um, I'd have to do the math out again, but I believe that was what I had uh, chosen before or calculated before. We're only going to agility glitch the first encounter here. We're kind of going to slow down a lot. I'm at 66 agility. We are perfectly good uh, for the next area. I want to have 66, no more, no less. <clears throat> and we are, this, this dungeon is super duper small. Call hazard was kind of the big part, and this is just a little itty bitty part after the fact. Uh, there is a bit of a scary enemy in here, but thankfully we're faster. They're called Lamaya. Uh, they use Wind Cutter 3, I think the only enemy in the game that does. That hits seven times. It also hits a really, really hard, so uh, looks like we got lucky and avoided them. We only got three encounters. Usually I get about a bajillion, and optimally you get like one. All right, so this is Zels. He's the wind boss. He has three attacks. He has a long range attack, he has a short range attack, and he has a mid range attack. We're going to start with Magic Barrier, which will now make us invincible. He's going to start with his long range attack, which we don't really care about. I'm going to try to sit in a spot to bait out his mid range attack because it is very, very easy to dodge, unless I kill him in one turn. Now he's gonna need one more hit. So he walked up. This is the attack I don't want him to do because it's the close range, you can't dodge that. If he uses his mid range, which doesn't matter because he's dead. If he uses mid range, you can run forward or back and dodge it very easily. So that was uh, that was Zels. He was a boss, I think. Yeah, so he has 680 HP and then obviously with the death tube, we're, we're quite powerful. We can just beat him, what, four hits, yeah. I guess? Yeah, he's also weak to earth since he is wind. And that's this is where we use the blue wings to come back. And now for my personal favorite part of the game uh, is Blue Cave. Well, not Blue Cave, right before Blue Cave. It's Larpal. So when we get the, uh, I think it's the, the Jade, the Wind Jade. The Wind Jade, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to talk to Layla in this room to lower the water. But as it turns out, this door is actually the trigger to lower the water. So as it, to me, Larpal is actually just a giant toilet. And we have now flushed Larapool so that we can go into Blue Cave, the sewer system of the game. I should mention, I really do not like Blue Cave. Yeah, in that room, there's actually an NPC there, which we didn't... We don't actually need to talk to them for it to lower. We just need to enter the door and then and leave, basically. 
And this is the so-called next dungeon, I guess, Blue Cave. Yep. Yeah, this is the next dungeon. We'll put that in quotes because we're going to go out of bounds immediately. And we are going to skip the entirety of this area. So I, have, I have a little bit of setup. And once we get into the encounter, which is random, when we will get that encounter, we will go out of bounds. And I have the right amount of agility, 66. Perfect. I know exactly where I need to stand. I just need that encounter. And this is uh, an okay encounter. So there's these three dots right here. There's the one I'm standing on right here, right here, and right here. They form a nice little triangle. And if I stand right here with 66 agility, cast magic barrier so I don't take damage. And again, blink and you miss it. We're gonna walk into that corner up there and I'm gonna clip out of bounds. So if you wanna see another out of bounds, here we go. I'm out of bounds. And then we have to hope that escape plays nice, which isn't going to. All right, there we go. So these each are kind of individual planes. So I actually have to clip from plane to plane. The first two you have to clip by walking at the wall like this. And the last one, you just walk along the wall. And we are now completely out of bounds in Blue Cave. And as it turns out, Blue Cave, even as big as it is, the entire area is loaded. We are going to skip everything. So Blue Cave is probably like a 10, 11, 12 minute split. This is now going to be about two, three minutes. It's a little bit of a time save. Yeah, it's a much, much bigger time save than Cole has it was. And you can probably Jeez. see that you can probably see it as a pattern as well going on with these dungeons and what we're doing here with, with these out of bounds as well. Mm -hmm. Like back in SGTQ 2013, like we'll see Kirk here and Peaches walking through, but we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, and they talked about how the, they think this game is well programmed, uh, and it, it, for the most part, is. There's just, unfortunately, some stuff they forgot to cleanse or check. Uh, but very convenient for me, so I can do this. And now we're going to walk out of bounds for about a minute and 45 or so. Uh, so if you got any donations, now's a good time, and I'm going to hydrate. All right, we have a $15 donation from Observant Churro, who says was never able to play this game for more than an hour as a kid without rage quitting. You're a good person for breaking it in front of all these people. Thank you. $25 from Shifter, who says Quest 64 was so frustrating to me as a kid, but I love the design of it from the monsters to the music. I look forward to seeing it broken without a game shark. <laughs> nice, thank you. Oh, if anyone's wondering, I'm currently cheating. Uh, you can reset the thumbstick of an N64 controller by, bring, by pressing Start L and R, and I held down, press Start L and R, and it reset the center of the thumbstick so that when it let go, it thinks I'm running forward. So I could take a drink. You got any more? Keep them coming. Absolutely. $15 from Jazz37, who says, At the start of 2020, I found this game and I've been hooked ever since. Huge shout outs to the Quest 64 community and Bing. Thank you so very much. Yo, Jazz. Thank you, dude. Hope you're doing all right. Ten all right. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Go ahead. $10 from Lucky the Bear, who says, I've loved this game since I was a kid. I am so hyped to see Bing Chang at GDQ. Yo, Lucky, thank you. And all right, uh, we are at the end of Blue Cave. We're going to do a big old agility glitch here. Uh, and this is uh, this is just going to give us a huge amount of agility. We have 66. We should end up with 70, 71. Um, at this point in the game, it is ridiculous how much agility this gives you. And uh, the, the whole agility route is kind of getting the right amount of agility before certain areas. And unfortunately, there is one enemy in this next area who is the absolute worst. He is called Grengok, or as we like to call him, Fish Stick, because he is quite literally a fish on a stick. He has 75 agility. Hopefully, we will not get him or we lose about a minute. Now, a new glitch was found recently called Chegzit, and I am going to take advantage of that glitch right now. I'm going to not even use it, but I'm going to set it up. So uh, essentially, saving here is the entire setup for the glitch. Um, the way exit works is when you go uh, into a dungeon or out of a dungeon, it sets a new exit point. Well, it turns out when you save there and step out of uh, that house, the exit point doesn't get reset. So you can die, respawn there, step out, cast exit, and it can take you wherever your exit point is, including Mammon's World, which is super convenient. All right. So now we do not want to see a fish stick or a Grengok as they are normally called. 
but it's not a big deal if we do. We'll just have a little bit more agility later on. All right, and we got these guys. They have a uh, 32 agility or a 30, somewhere between 32 and 36. They're not particularly fast. That's what we wanted. We now have, seven, I think we're gonna have 75 agility, which is fantastic. Okay, Soul Searcher 2. Heal up here. Uh, fish sticks still hit like a truck, so yeah, 75 agility. That's what we wanted. Awesome. That's super nice. So we're just on the way <laughs> to the third boss now, so Nepti. Yep. Yep, Nepti, Kirk Hughes waifu. Shout out to Kirk Hugh. Uh, <laughs> she is the worst boss. Um, not because she's any kind of particularly tough, I guess, in a sense. It's more that she is the smallest hitbox of all the bosses, so Avalanche tends to miss constantly. Uh, there is... I, I have one-shot her before, so it's not outside the realm of possibility, but uh, she's just the absolute worst. Um, and like any good Jedi, we're going to take the high ground and uh, drop rocks on her face. Like this. Yeah. And we're going to only hit her once. Nice. So Magic Barrett can miss as well, so it's got a 90% yeah. success rate, so probably during this run you will see, you will see the failing. Alright, 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 don't walk. Thank you. So we need about six hits. I want her to do yeah, that. as well. Okay, so we got lucky with that. Ooh, oh, alright, that was a good fight. Oh, we didn't even have to use the confusion at all. Mm. So, use confusion so I don't have to use an MP item. That was a, that was a, oof. That was a good fight. I'm gonna be thinking about that one for a while. Usually that goes horribly, and uh, we waste about five minutes just trying to hit her with a rock. Uh, so now we are going to go back into the end of Blue Cave, pick up some stuff, do some a little bit of agility glitch, and then we're going to uh, go to the next area, and we're going to do the old version of the Out of Bounds, hopefully. Uh, if we get the right encounters, we're going to do what's called the Compression Out of Bounds. And uh, you'll understand why we don't do this anymore very, very quickly. Uh, it's because the spell Compression needs to actually land, and that spell is uh, mean, a butthead. You know, pick your pick your insult, and it's probably accurate. <sighs> All right. There's a uh, Iliac and Colleen. Colleen is the water sorceress lady of this area, uh, and Kiliak was actually supposed to be the third playable character. Uh, he was supposed to be a melee character. We just walked by Epona and Chappie. And oh, that ch that glitch I was talking about with the exit, we call it Chappie Warp, or as I like to call it, Chegzit. Um, and Epona, we're going to find out later, is actually a super powerful wizard that's at least a thousand years old that captured Mammon way back when. And this is actually the enemy that we'd like to see in just a little bit for the Out of Bounds, a Scarecrow. They walk kind of slow, but they're they're big and bulky, so they're they're good to set up for off of uh, compression. All right, we're gonna exit, since our exit point is set to this door currently. 79 agility, awesome. Normally we do a death warp there, but unfortunately that's not happening, so we're going to have to walk over to the boat. It would just, the death warp would save this walk to the boat. Yeah, so this boat now cycles between different places now? Yep. It cycles between three places, uh, west, West Carmel, East Limelin, and whatever the Dondurin area, I can never remember what that's called. Dondurin Flats. Dondurin Flats. Yeah. yeah. Also, for anyone that wants to learn this game, uh, I'm, I'm bad and I haven't written accurate current notes, so please at me on Twitter, in Discord, on any Twitch stream that you see me, just at me until I actually sit down and write the notes. Uh, I just need a little bit of extra motivation, you know? But if you do want to learn the run, uh, besides me actually sitting down and writing the notes, I'm more than happy to teach anyone. Yeah, at this moment, you're probably the only runner for this category right now, I would say. I'm definitely the only runner for any percent. Yeah. <laughs> Squid to Pig, the guy who found basically every glitch, shoutouts to him. Um, he was the only other runner that really do any percent with glitches. Uh, with Death Dupe, but he is unfortunately a bit inactive right now. Um, but I should mention, he found basically every glitch. Almost all of them. 
Initiative glitch was known because it's something that you can accidentally do. And I accidentally found agility glitch thanks to our, our friend and uh, hydration bot, uh, Big Mouth. But yeah, Squid found literally everything else. The dude is a monster at breaking this game. Yeah, even even and thank you all for adding me. Even though even though it looks super simple, these out of bounds, like these were not found until like 2015, 2016. It's quite later on. The well the Battle Arena clip was found in like 2017. Ah, okay. Is it, oh, I didn't mean to agility glitch that. Uh, they were, uh, it was originally just compression out of bounds, but thankfully when we found the Battle Arena clip, it basically converted all the compression out of bounds. That's not good. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Escape. Um, it converted all the compression out of bounds, except this one, into Battle Arena clips instead, which are, you know, just a matter of having the right of agility and standing in the right spot. And the compression out of bounds were an RNG mess. Hopefully we get to see it right now. No. We're probably not going to do a right counter. I wouldn't mind if we don't have to do it on a Scarecrow, because Scarecrows are... They're slow, and they're also buttheads. I don't like them very much. They've uh, they've ruined a couple runs here and there. Um, we will probably get a Wyvern, which is what was used for the old compression out of bounds in All Hazard way back when, but nowadays is kind of ignored, unfortunately. We're getting a lot of encounters. Still turning the camera away, no lag. Even though the game just decides it's gonna lag anyway. If we get a six blood gel encounter, it will no lag. Encounters have been pretty good actually, apart from this area actually, so far. Hmm? Encounter rate has been quite good. Oh yeah, it's been quite nice. Uh, hopefully we'll get a weapon real quick here. This is, they, can, they can spawn until we walk through that little gap just a small bit back. And of course, it's going to taunt us. I, I love you too, Quest. I love you too. All right, so we're going to have a ceiling spell. I'm going to take that guy out. I'm going to walk this guy up against the wall. He's going to hurt me a lot. Oh, I don't have compression. <laughs> Never mind. I can't do this. I need one more spirit. I, for I know what I did. I forgot to clone the one in uh, the end of the game. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, well. We cannot do that out of bounds. Yeah, we're one off. Yeah, you, compression is 19 fire. Oh, look at that. The game is now just just talk, uh, mocking me. I, I appreciate you too, Quest. Appreciate you too. If we did do this out of bounds in this area, if it's done optimally, it saves uh, about... It can save up to like a minute and change, but that's if it's done really, really well. Usually it's about even, but it's just safer because there's less encounters. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, this is... You get to see this little area. This is the best one to miss as well, I would say. Yeah, this is the one that really doesn't matter that much. We also walk past the Lineland as well. One of the, one mm -hmm. of the towns is, again. Again, it's just a lot of spirits there and a lot of items, but... We don't need that yeah, in this room. There's, what was that? One, two, three, four, Six, I think. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine spirits. Nah. Yes. I just counted them <laughs> in my head. Sorry. I, I visually remember where every spirit in this game is because I've played it so, 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 so much. Yeah, so all spirits is actually a category as well, which people do. So, as in the name, so you just pretty much grab every spirit in the game. It's our version of 100% uh, because there's really not really much else to track, maybe chests and stuff, but yeah, it's not a big deal. Alright, so if we had gone out of bounds, we actually would have come back in bounds right here. This, for whatever reason, this pathway right here conveniently puts you back in bounds because the entrance to uh, Baragoon Tunnel is a door that you can't open from out of bounds, which is super convenient that that happens to be right there. And unfortunately, it didn't happen, but that's just the way it goes. Grabbing some more items, and we're gonna agility glitch the first encounter, and then we're going to do one of two out of bounds in the game that exist without us having to do any kind of setup. They accidentally left a couple corners in the game. Uh, one of them is here, but the one that originally inspired this out of bounds, as well as the battle arena clip, is in uh, Vigis's room, or as I call him, Bogus, because that's what he is. Uh, in Bogus's room, you can actually soft lock the game if you do that out of bounds when Bogus is dead. You cannot get out of that room, you cannot cast exit, you cannot cast return, you cannot use any items, uh, both exits are doors, you cannot clip back in bounds. I accidentally agility glitched again. 
So, don't go out of bounds in his room. Uh, also, in Blue Cave, I forgot to mention this, in the Blue Maze portion of Blue Cave, right before the end, the ascent to uh, the exit, there are uh, there's an area with a bunch of skelebats. If you get to that area, do not use a uh, rock shower. It will hard lock the game. Don't do it. If you want to do it, make sure you save first. <laughs> because it, it, it will crash the game. There's no getting out of it without completely turning off the console. Do we know the reason for that, actually? Why? Uh, presumably because Blue Cave is a huge area and Rock Shower and Skelebats have a lot of polygons. So uh, the assumption is that there's too much on the screen for the game to handle. Right. Or too much loaded for the game to handle. Makes sense. Uh, we would normally, in an 80% run, skip shelf, but thanks to you guys at home, uh, we're actually going to fight her. And we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to... Well, you'll see. I'll let you enjoy the little bit of a surprise. So this is the corner. You walk into the corner. If you want to see an out of bounds, here it is. I walk into the corner and slightly turn left, but I'm messing it up slightly. Do it. There we go. Got it. I'm done. Oof. Out of bounds. So this was one of the first ones, right, as well? Yeah, that was the very first Battle Arena style clip. Uh, it was that one. And then we still used the compression, and then Battle Arena clip was discovered that you could use your own movement arena. And then uh, we did that. So unfortunately, the out of bounds are very visually uninteresting, especially this one. It's just a void. Uh, but there is a particular set of movements we will have to do to drop our height such a way that we can see the rest of the dungeon very easily. I could normally just run directly to the end and be fine, but instead we're going to drop our height. So I'm using that little stuff at the bottom right, and I'm going to run eastward. I should mention, your compass is your absolute best friend. When you are out of bounds, you will never get lost. I'm going to run until I zoom into a wall. I will know I've hit the wall because Brian will zoom into the screen really close. And then I'm going to run northeast using Brian's dust cloud when he starts moving. Every time Brian starts moving, he creates a little bit of dust cloud. Um, so I'm going to use that going northeast like this. To let me know when I can go east again, which should be right about there. I'm going to go northeast for a second, and then I'm going to turn southeast. It's going to hit a wall. There we go. And it's going to, I'm going to drop down in four, three, two, one, drop. Ooh, almost. Almost perfect. I always like to guess that. I've gotten it like exactly right two or three times ever. Usually I'm off by a full count or so. That was, I was pretty close. That was pretty close. As good as it's gonna get usually. Yeah, <laughs> poor Kings <of> <laughs> All right, so there is some dungeon here to our right, uh, going towards Shilf. We're gonna we're gonna run by here. We're gonna set up the Chexit point, as it were. And then we're going to show her what's what. Uh, oh, and we're also going to get an agility glitch because, uh, you know, agility route and all that. All right, so you can see, you can, it's funny, like, uh, when you're looking at the pathway, you can see spirits way further than you can see the actual, like, dungeon rooms. So you can usually see, like, a little white sparkling spot in the distance, and then the room loads in, like, a full two or three seconds later. It's pretty funny. We're going to grab an encounter right here for an agility glitch. We're gonna slow guys, but they're not gonna hurt us, so that's whatever. Now, unfortunately, we can't fight Chill from Out of Bounds or we would have a bad time, but I will show you what it looks like. Be right there. Oh, no, not quite. There she is. So that's that's Shelf Serena. Hi Shelf, how's it going? Hope you're hope you're doing all right. I'm just gonna walk through walls and you know I'll come back in a second. Wanna get a little safe, you know? So we think this saves around six minutes over walking walking all the way through, probably roughly. Yep, including skipping Shelf. You don't actually have to fight Shelf to complete the game. Uh, so we've now set the Chegs a point. I am going to I'm actually gonna clone this spirit down here real quick. And I'm going to pick up an item. I should mention that you cannot clone chests, very unfortunately. Uh, if you do that, the, the item is just gone forever. So let's open up this chest first. An extra healing item. We're going to clone this one. Cool, exit point is there, and we're going to go fight Shelf from behind. Now, 
the the entire reason this is great is uh, just because because you enter the the encounter from the back and Shulf is just staring there. Oh God, he's behind me. <laughs> just imagine Brian just standing there like this, just standing there in the back. She's talking to us like she's in front of. Just just ignore him. He's back there. He's staring menacingly. Unfortunately, the rest of the fight is much the same. Ooh, that's a there we go, Magic Berry missed now. Well, you, might, you might see Chiggs at a little sooner rather than later. Alright, so if Magic Berry misses again, I'm probably dead. <laughs> so there you go. First death. But no big deal. And that's why we have to set up as well. And, and that's why this exists. I'm glad I get to show this to you because it's, it's really neat. Save real quick there. And we'll cast exit. And we're back here. Because that's where the exit point is. It's the goofiest thing. It's so nice. It's such a convenient safety thing for a run. This was all intentional to show everyone. <laughs> yeah, I totally 100% missed a self buff on purpose. Absolutely my fault. Yeah, so that was a 1% chance if it's 90% to hit. So 1% chance of missing twice there. Yeah. It's a 90% chance for Magic Barrier to hit, and uh, I am me, and this is Quest 64, and it said no. Alright, so we're gonna, we just need to hit her like two or three times, and that was a ridiculous, oh, two of those just completely missed. <laughs> that was a silly avalanche. Oh my goodness. And we have 21 MP, so there we go. We're getting our revenge. As long as we hit her, please, rocks. You see how good uh, Avalanche is when it, or Magic Barrier is when it actually lands. All right, Avalanche, what are you doing, buddy? All right, we are going to do the, it's gonna be a little risky, use Confusion, oh, of course. So we're just gonna slap her one, since I have a extra turn of that, and we're gonna hope Magic Barrier doesn't miss. Drop another rock or two on her. Please, Avalanche. What are you doing, buddy? I think we need two more hits. I hit her four times. Oh, it was a four. four oh, it was a four. So okay, four more Okay. Avalanche, what are you doing? There we go. She's done. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, no, it, was, it was three. You're right. I thought it was four. Avalanche, you are not being friendly. Shout out to my fiance. Chilf uh, is her favorite character in this game. We're going to do this. Dewdrop is just kind of an extra item. Oh, cool. Please miss. Okay. <laughs> this is what you guys paid for. Look what you did to me. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. And this is why we normally skip her. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to load that save because I want to have that dewdrop. drop. That's the way it goes. Now you get to know what quest is normally like. This is what I usually see, is this. All things considered, this is probably about three minutes time we've wasted, which is not that much. Four minutes, maybe. Give or take. Ah, that's the way it goes. Alright, let's let's do this again, Chilf. I know you don't like me showing up from the back, but let's so let's, uh, let's, uh, let's finish this up, alright? It's kind of RNG. Oh, really? It's RNG whether she walks or not. There we go. It's RNG whether she walks or not, so uh, convenient when she does at first. One more? One more? Yeah. We're gonna go for it. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go for uh, a little bit of a cheeky avalanche. 
Oh, please. <laughs> of course it missed. <laughs> Uh. Ooh, I thought she'd be dead. Alright, okay. Okay. Well, that went completely according to plan. Which is to say, not even slightly. Alright. <laughs> We're still fine time-wise, so... Yeah, no, we're completely fine time-wise. My my estimate assumes that we die to every boss at least one time. That was... Okay, so that attack right there has a very uh, odd hitbox. If you run up a hill, you dodge it, but it also lingers for like a solid second after it disappears, so that's why I waited there before running out. First try every time. Easy. Easy win. Uh, Dindrum Dry. So there is an area way to the southeast called Shanwood. It is the secret area of this game. Um, it has 11 spirits, a whole bunch of items, a little bit of a unique backstory with Lavar, who talked about how he got exiled there for trying to steal the Eltail book a long, long time ago. Uh, presumably he was going to be maybe like a secret boss type of thing, but again, fortunately this game is very, 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 very unfinished. Uh, about 60% is uh, what the general guesstimate is for how, how close they were to finishing this game. Sham Shaman okay. arguably has the best music in the game as well. Arguably. Big disagree. Uh, I would say Brnock, Brnock Castle, and then Mammon's Fight, personally. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not big on the uh, light, relaxing music. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to have to disagree on that one. I would say overall that the music in this game is quite good. Oh yeah, the music in this game is fantastic. The uh, I highly suggest you look up the uh, composer. He has a very eclectic selection of things that he has uh, done music for, but it's all very good, and a lot of it you can hear uh, very similar sounds to what you hear in this game's soundtrack. Uh, it's it's really good. As a, I mean, I think I think I saw somebody mention earlier that the the sound the battle music sounds like Final Fantasy VII. And it's like, it's, yeah, it's definitely uh, Final Fantasy kind of style combat music. It's, it's neat. I really enjoy this music. It's a shame we don't get the boat music from the Game Boy version. That is the best of all the musics uh, between the two games. But we'll live with what we got. The Game Boy version is quite short, right? It's very short um, compared to this game. It's a, a little bit longer as a it's run. A long, oh, well, as a run, yeah, but as a playthrough, I think it's shorter, right? Uh, as a playthrough, you can definitely beat it a lot faster. Unfortunately, the Game Boy version currently has no known glitches, or at least no known useful glitches for a speedrun. Um, so, it's just, you know, playing it optimally. I'm not gonna risk a... He should just use silence, but I wasn't gonna risk a, him not doing that. Alright. 97, we want to have an encounter in a particular spot. This ain't it. We want that encounter right about here that we can set up for a battle arena clip. Please tell me... Actually, it doesn't matter what encounter I get because I still have a seat. Oh, Rockies. Oh, boy. Shout out to Rocky for being the absolute slowest enemy in this game. I hate you. <laughs> I say that with the most amount of love that I can possibly say. Rockies are... Uh, they're just rude. All right, so this is the Out of Bounds. Again, another battle arena clip. We set it up with that spot way back there. Look now, or you're going to miss it. Walk into the corner. Oof, we're out of bounds. Oh, and of course, unfortunately, I'm a little too close, so I got an encounter. But that's okay. Again, this pretty much lets us skip the whole dungeon. Saves. Yeah, this skips the whole dungeon, and we're gonna skip Fargo as well. Sorry. Saves about six minutes, I think. Uh, the Fargo fight is like four or five minutes, and then the rest of the wall. Actually, probably it's closer to seven or eight minutes now that I think about right. it, because Rockies are terrible. It's it's hard. To, it really you, you don't appreciate how slow Rockies are until you do this out of bounds a lot, and then you play through the game glitchless, and you have to deal with Rockies because they are so slow. They are so slow. All right, if you've got a couple of donuts, you got a minute and 14 exactly starting down. All right, we've got a lot. We have a $100 donation Ooh. from Schoolie D, who says, good, 
Good luck, Bing. Hope you were able to relax a bit after getting death dupe for 60,000 viewers. Thanks for the GDQ staff for including our game this year. Yo, school, thank you. And also, shout out to school. He, uh, he found the setup for that with saying to use boots. Thanks again, dude. We have $5 from RPP who says, Good luck, Bing. So glad you finally got this into GDQ. Ban fish sticks and break through guilty. Thank you, RPP. $25 from Jonathan172 who says, Gonna miss another run for another game I never got to finish, but maybe someday. Good luck on the run and remember not to do the thing you're not supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I will remember. We have a $50 donation from Winslash who says, Ah, yes, Quest 64. Fond memories of tying a rubber band around the controller to run around in a circle to grind out agility. I wish 10-year-old me knew there were better ways. Thanks for running this, Bing. Thank you for the donation, my dude. We have another $100 donation from Milgrips25 who says, I don't know this game. I don't know what to say. All I know is there's monsters to slay and spend a 100 bucks in my name. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, so we we are uh, at the end of Boil Hole. Uh, as you can see, there is Fargo down there just kind of staring into space, really, really confused uh, why we're not fighting him. Uh, if we were to have uh, fought him, we would actually stand uh, just out of bounds over that little volcano right there. He would walk up to us, he would use his close range attack over and over and over and over and over again, and we'd be standing just out of his reach, laughing at him, dropping rocks on his head. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. Alright, there we go. We're gonna run to the exit here. And this is kinda, right about here is when the run, or the game really shows uh, they rush to finish it because everything is a straight line. Um, and you start to get a little bit of uh, stuff they didn't get a chance to clean up. Um, it'll, it'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. But first, we're going to pick up a couple of items, a couple of safety items and all that. So if you got uh, two or three more donos, go ahead. Absolutely. We've got $5 from Lemon178 who says, This was unironically one of my favorite childhood games, and I have tons of memories of it. I played the heck out of it and still couldn't beat it. I am loving this run and so excited to see it at GDQ. Thank you to the runner and everyone involved in this event. Oh, thank you for the dono, my dude. I never beat this game as a kid either, <laughs> without Game Shark at least. <laughs> we have $50 from Landmine who says, Quest 64 was one of my favorite games as a kid. Glad to see the death dupe worked out. Hope those pinheads aren't too hard on you. Yo, speaking of Landmine, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, Landmine, thank you very much for that dono, but Landmine is working on a hard mod for this game. Uh, so that you, you heard it here first, the very first uh, mod Quest 64 is a hard mod by our boy Landmine36. Uh, it's still in progress, but what's available now is super fun to play, and it's super interesting. Uh, unfortunately, he hates Avalanche and the Magic Barrier and fun, though he got rid of those. Um, <laughs> or nerfed them hard. Uh, but this is really where, right here, is where we're going to talk about how the game is unfinished, because uh, I'm, there's supposed to be encounters here, but if you walk along this wall, there are encounters here reasons. Uh, I assume it has something to do with the way encounters uh, load in or how they're allowed to load in and that spot just doesn't allow it but there's actually two more two or three more spots that we're gonna do that our clone two spirits here real quick all right Maybe got uh, one, one or two more. Sure, we have $25 from That Drunken Dwarf who says, doing great so far in Quest 64, a game I never knew existed until a few years ago. Keep it up and if anything goes wrong, remember to blame Jazzy. <laughs> Will do, thank you. Although I might blame PJ too. And we have a $100 donation from Sin Katie who says, my brother made it to the end of the game without a game shark until I accidentally saved over his game with mine. I've never really shaken the guilt, but hopefully supporting MSF can do a little to make it up. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Also, this is another spot where there's no encounters, and that front door looks really, really fancy, but unfortunately it's locked, so like any good hero, we're gonna go uh, up into the back door up there. We got one or two more. Sure, we have a $250 donation 
from Dolo C, who says, Awesome run so far, Bing. I played this game in high school and balanced my elements, which led to a terrible time. Still, though, this is my second favorite game after Resident Evil 6. Good luck on the rest of the run. Thank you, thank you. Uh, real quick here, I'm actually going to purposely take a death uh, just to make a safety save here, and we're going to use Chase it to come right back. We got one or two more, go ahead. Sure, we have a $10 donation from Fishy who says, I remember playing Quest 64 as a kid. I didn't own a memory pack for my Nintendo, so I'd leave my system on for days in a row to try to get as far as I could. Thanks for bringing back some great memories and breaking this game. Absolutely, and thank you for that donation. And for the record, I totally did that with Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 1. Before I had a memory card, I'd leave it on when I went to school and then came back. I don't think my mom was happy about that, but that's <laughs> what I had to do. I did a similar thing with um, uh, Star Fox 64. Of course, you can't really save in that game, um, from what I remember at least. But unfortunately, I like, went to dinner, and my sister... Uh, her room was down near where the N64 was, and she came back out, saw it was on. I was like, oh, why is this on? And turned it off, and we had made it all the way to the good ending. Oh, uh, man. Sometimes. All right, so that was another chase it there. Um, just the easy, it's just a quick save. Uh, if we do die to guilty, it's just going to be a faster way for us to get back. I could have saved in Brnock, or I could use chase it and save probably like two minutes in terms of walking back to uh, guilty if we have to. Uh, Guilty is, uh, he's unpleasant, but he's also a rather large boss, so it's, it's kind of a mixture. He hits really hard, uh, he gets hit a lot because he's rather big, uh, but he's also, uh, he has no element, so in the US version, there's only two enemies with no element, Guilty and Mammon, and since they have no element, they take half damage from all spells. They actually fixed that in the JP version, they made the no element, uh, I guess they call it neutral or something. But what happens is they take normal amounts of damage. Uh, they're not weak to anything, but they're not strong against anything. And that is, oh, that makes that so much nicer. It's a huge difference, um, yeah, between the two. Yeah, it is a very significant difference in terms of damage we do to them. All right, so, um, oh, another thing to talk about. Sorry, picking up stuff. There is a actually a bit of a setup for Avalanche for bosses. Uh, I don't really use it for Nepti or Zells because I haven't been able to find a good spot. But on every boss fight uh, on the map itself, there's kind of grid lines uh, that if uh, if I cast Avalanche, rocks are more likely to uh, drop where these lines cross on each map. And Guilty happens to spawn in the exact center of his room. And if we move correctly or have enough agility to move correctly, he will not move on his first turn. So we will stand at the top of the diamond uh, with him being in the exact center of the room. And rocks will hit him way more often than they normally would. Now, we could still have a really good fight without him being in the center of the room. But having him be in the center of the room just makes it more likely for him to get hit with rocks. And there is a bit of a setup for Bogus as well, but uh, he's his AI is a bit finicky whether he will move or not, so his is a little bit harder to set up. Has he got anything to add? Um, well, I mean, we're getting pretty close to the boss, so Guilty has 1800 HP, so how much damage are we going to do roughly per rock? Do you know? Uh, probably 90. 90, right, so we we'll probably need around 20, 20 rocks. 22, I think. 22. 21, 22. We'll see. Right. We're here now. Here he is, the big bad himself. Guiltmeister. He talks about how he wants to experiment on you. You say, okay, I'm just a child. We run up and uh, miss Magic Barrier. Good, good stuff. I'm just waiting a little bit for the RNG to shift. If I were to cast it exactly the same, it would likely miss again. Who? I'm going to use a healing item because I don't want to die. And we're back uh, where, where we would normally be. All right, so we're going to just do this. And this is going to be a whole lot of uh, magic barrier and avalanche. Four, five. All right, I'll take that. That was a good start. Yeah, we're going to be about 19, 19, 20. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, if if uh, you got any more donors, go ahead and read them. This is a bit of a long fight, but it's pretty uninteresting beyond avalanche. Of sure, we have a appropriately enough a sixty-four dollar donation from Ian Forty Six 
who says, Quest 64 has been a favorite game ever since my cousin lent it to me as a kid. Thanks to Bing Chang for running this game and for GDQ for putting this game on the schedule. Thank you. We have a $100 donation from Squid Tepig. I think I said that correctly. Oh. Says, uh, top of the morning, Bing. Did you remember to eat your morning fresh bread and drink the ever so tasty spirit light? It's your number one quest boy here. Who would have actually thought that Quest 64 would ever make its glorious return to a GDQ? Good job with the death dude. That made me tear up just a little bit. Shout out to the original quest boys, Kurt Q, Peaches, Rhea Skies, Camadora, and Jazzy Choi, 1991. My only question now is Town Dupe when? Good luck with the run. <laughs> and may you have a blessed RNGesus guilty fight. Can I get a Quest Boys hype? Hype. Yo, so that's Squid. Uh, we're at 16. Squid is the boy who broke this game apart. Shout out to him. Thank you, my dude. I hope you're doing great. Just got more. Keep oh, absolutely. They keep on coming in for this one. We have a $50 donation from Demon Fire who says, This is a game I missed as a kid, but came to like later on. I just really dig the aesthetic, and it's a very comfy game to watch speedruns of. Thank you. We have $5 from Decky who says, Hi, SGDQ. I'm loving this run. I used to hate Quest 64 growing up and claimed it was the worst game I ever played. I recently played it again and fell in love with it, though I beat it without a memory card, so I couldn't perform the spirit dupe glitch. Keep up the good work. Oh, nice. Thank you. And we just killed Guilty, and actually, speaking of the spirit dupe glitch, you actually do not need a memory card to do either of, or any of the glitches. Um, you just need to save at an inn. It just, well, you don't even need to save at an inn, honestly. Saving at the inn just means you respawn at a nicer point. So for, if you want to try the glitches, you don't need a memory card. All right. So as you recall, we talked about how there is a, there's a bit of a story for this game and that we'd, uh, we'd talk about it. Well, we're almost there. We're almost ready to talk about the story of the legendary N64 RPG Quest 64. But I need to go grab a couple items and save real quick. Talk about it. All right, so we're basically done with uh, anything kind of specific. It's a lot of just walking and fighting bosses. As you notice, the, the end of the game is very much a straight line of nothing. Uh, they tried to spruce it up a little bit with different rooms, but uh, running in a circle in this same looking hallway for like six minutes is uh, not great. Just wish there was, I wish there was more. I wish they had more time to finish it. Uh, what a game this could have been. But it's still, still a great game. Still my favorite game. Uh, yeah. I say that in all honesty that this is my favorite game. Tied with Morrowind, of course. Yeah, they rushed this out to rival Ocarina of Time, but we all know which is the superior game, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> which one's remembered for being good? <laughs> all right. We're gonna go in here, grab three items, one, three, and five. I think one of them is a healing, two of them is MP items. Uh, this. First one is the MP items. We're gonna grab this, I'm going to grab this, and we're going to make the second to last save of the run with our boy Leonardo. He was supposed to be more important to the story. He's supposed to be a rival, kind of, with us. He's a, he's a mage or wizard from Renak, actually, and he finds out that Bogus is evil. But now we need to talk about the story. So at the beginning of the game, the Eltale book, The Power of the Spirits, was stolen from Melrode Monastery. Our father, a great spirit tamer, uh, left to go recapture the book or get it back about a month ago. And us, being a 10-year-old boy in a world without technology or anything, are super worried about our father. So of course, we beg the Grand Abbot to go, and the Grand Abbot's like, all right, cool. Um, so we've gone all this way to catch up to our father, but first things first, uh, this is now chest 64. Uh, this is unique to this chest that you can clip into it. This is a thing. I don't know. I think it's great. I love it. You can't do it with the other one. 
Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we wanted to catch up with our father, and there he is. You can see him in the distance, and uh, as I like to say in my channel, hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. We just leave him there to suffer. You don't even care. The rest of the story is that uh, some gems get stolen, they ask us to save them, we go, okay, we got the gem for you, and they go, actually, you know what, you a 10-year-old boy, yeah, you hold on to it, it's better off in your hands. And then we find out that Mammon's actually the big bad behind everything who wants the Eltail book and all the gems all in one spot so he can escape his jail that he kind of put him in, and we're gonna be like, no, no, no. So this is Bogus, he is Bogus. He's got a small hitbox, he's got the same width as Nefty, but he's a little bit longer. Uh, he stayed there. This is what I like to call the Kobe. And he was... Ooh, and he stayed in the center, which is super nice. So we're gonna do this. He's gonna do that. I'm going to stand right about there. Should hit him with like two or three rocks. Yeah, so 1900 oh, HP, so roughly about 10 hits, including the first hit as well. Yeah, about 10 hits. 10, 11. Yeah. Cool. He should take full damage from spells. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Please Same thing again. Magic barrier, avalanche, magic barrier, avalanche. It's just so, so, so strong. And he, since he's a fire element, he takes full damage from spells, so he's, uh, pretty whatever in terms of just, you just need to actually hit him. Three. And this is the room where we, we found the Out of Bounds. That column that you can see on the left screen, there's another one behind me to the right. If you walk behind that, you can clip Out of Bounds in this room. Oh, this is not a good fight. What is that, five? Four, I think. That's four. Four, great. Four plus the one in the beginning. Right. Four and change. What are MP items? Five. Uh, five. Five should be more than enough for. I did grab an extra MP item, and this is this is pretty much why I wanted that extra one for this fight, because he's he's a poopy head. Um, six, seven. All right, that's looking better. Yeah, in this game, self buffs can miss. That's really all that needs to be said about that. Like that. Cool. Thanks, game. You're my favorite. Please. Healing item because I don't want to die. Go eight, nine, ten. He should be dead. There we go. Cool. That wasn't a great fight, but it wasn't that bad either. Alright, so, like A Link to the Past, uh, randomizers where they ask, uh, where is Ganon's big key? I want to ask you, chat, how many encounters are we going to see in Mammon's World? Are we going to see none? Are we going to see a bajillion? Let me know what you think. I'm going to guess three. Okay. I'm going to take the wonderful guess and say zero, obviously because I don't want to have to deal with that, <laughs> to be completely honest. All right, and we found out uh, just now that Shannon's actually working for Mammon. We got the Eltail book. The story is over. The game is done. Oh, no, we have to beat up Mammon. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go beat him up. 60 counters. <laughs> All right, so this is really where the game really, really like, oh, yeah, they ran out of time. Spooky background, very incomplete looking areas. We're in Mammon's world. There are encounters in this room, uh, but I'm walking a particular path so that they don't happen. Great encounters. You see a lot of the same areas here. It's pretty uh, samey. Remember this room. It's very important. And if you have a couple donos, go right ahead. We have quite a few big ones. We have a $50 donation from Greg51 who says, glad to see Quest 64 wasn't just a weird dream I had as a kid. Thank you, 
Greg. We have an anonymous $50 donation that says, so many memories of watching my brother play Quest 64 while I, quote, controlled the enemies, unquote. <laughs> I should dig the game out so I can finally play it for real. I highly suggest that it's a lot of fun, especially if you have a little bit of knowledge of what to do going in. We have a $100 donation from Kirk Q, who says, Hey, Bing Chang, oh. watch out for the pinheads. I certainly will. Shout out to Kirk Q. Thank you, my dude. He is the OG runner. We have, we have $50 from Gerg, who says, Honestly forgot this game existed, and now I am flooded with memories of drawing maps on graph paper and writing out spell lists in what was probably one of the first RPGs I ever played. Thanks, Bing. Nice. Thank you. Also, this is the first room we can get encounters, and we got super lucky with no encounters. This next room is the second room with encounters. Good start so far. Uh, yeah, keep them going if you got them. We certainly do. We have a $131 donation from Nick75. They say, oh, Quest 64, they don't make them like this anymore. Here's $1 for every duped spirit. Oh, nice, thank you. Uh, so that was the Pinhead. They are the destroyer of dreams, the ruiner of my life. Um, they hit really, really, really hard. Somehow he missed one fireball and the other fireball didn't even interact with us. And then this is Spriggan, the most intimidating looking enemy in this area, who is just a big wimp. He can silence us, which does no damage, or he can punch us for a very measly, probably about 30 damage. Kind of pathetic, honestly. This is uh, another room with encounters, and if you got more, keep them going. All right, we have a $64 donation from Halfkey, who says donating 64 bucks for the best RPG on the Nintendo 64. Put this towards finding those Nokia ringtones. Nice. So uh, there you go. There's Pinhead's full strength. He hits really hard. And this is why we had extra HP and defense. Another room where we're, we can get encounters, but we're going to walk a particular path along some walls to not get encounters. Uh, and remember this room as well, because we're going to see the exact same room again a bit later. All right, keep them going. We have a $20 donation from Paxis, who says, Hi, GDQ. Longtime viewer and donator. Want to donate some more? So take my money and just keep up the good work for a good cause. Love to all involved in this. Shoutouts to the BBV community. And like always, greetings from Germany. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, so speaking of which, it's this room again, but slightly different colored. But uh, since we want to save some time for a GDQ marathon, do the shout outs now shall we so shout out to kirk q and peach is the original og runners of this game thank you for the inspiration to really start running this game shout outs to jazzy thank you for helping me here and also being uh, one of the early runners as well shout outs to squid for breaking this game apart and then shout outs to ria uh, school marsh uh flan every other name that i'm forgetting right now i'm sorry but all the quest community thank you all guys for being here for this entire thing i really appreciate all of you uh thank you bdq for having me and allowing me to show off this glorious glorious mess and shout out to you the viewers at home making this all possible i appreciate you yeah we gotta thank big chan as well giving a chance to see, see this game as well today Here's Epona, the last save in the game. You probably noticed that second save I have with uh, uh, 99 spirits. That's a hard mod save. Uses the same save files as this does. I promise I wasn't cheating too much. This is the Dark Mel Road, and then this room again. Uh, looks exactly the same, but uh, it leads to a slightly different spot. We are nearly at the end. Uh, when Mammon blows up is time. We are pretty, pretty close. We weren't joking when it said they did look exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, it's literally the same room, just the doors have different triggers. And, uh, yeah, and most importantly, I, I totally forgot because I've already shouted her out. My, uh, my fiancé, Andromeda, thank you for all the support. I really appreciate you and I love you. Jolf gives us the uh, Gale key uh, to allow us to go into Mammon's jail, I guess, whatever. Here's Mammon, 
He looks like the tick, I swear. Look at his face, it's the tick, 100%. Look at that. He's a big, giant barn door. He is impossible to miss. He's, he's, uh, he's, I don't know. He's a boss, I guess. It's at least four. So you can only see four hits, which is why I took my headphones off so I can listen to the game. Oh, if you got any more donuts, go ahead. Absolutely, we have a $25 donation from Zombo, who says, if Apple were to sell pies, they could sell apple pies without any actual apples in them. <laughs> Let's see, we have a $25 donation from Vicarious Vice, who says, with all these clever out-of-bounds glitches and other exploits, you've proven that Brian wins over Braun. I'll show myself out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that one. We have a $5 donation from Dajnir, who says, a $5 train, the Twitch chat rallying call, here's my donation. Snuck another haiku in there. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, he's almost dead. We're probably at, we're at, at least 12, uh, at least 16 now, but we might be at more. He could die in the next hit or two. So, ready with time. Are just going to get hit. That's unfortunate. All right. Please. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's an absolute unit. You're right. Okay. One more hit should do it, but we're going to be a little bit safe because I don't want to have to fight him again. Already died twice. The bosses. He should die in this hit, I believe. We're at least 16 hits, but we're probably closer to it. This should be the last, I think. Yeah, he's dead, I think. Yep, time. That's it. That was the big bad boss who won, who's jealous of humans. And then Shannon talks about how she thought she was bound to him, and then she's gonna go explore the world. And we should mention, there is a difference between the JP ending and the US ending. The US ending ends after this scrolls. The JP ending has a whole bunch of dialogue that you go through a bunch of characters and stuff. It's awesome. Uh, unfortunately, the US version is the uh, red-headed stepchild of the versions, if you will. <laughs> I think there's like 50 text boxes added to the JP version. Oh yeah, yeah. it's a lot of text boxes. But yeah, uh, I really appreciate, appreciate you all guys for being here. Thank you, GDQ, for having me. Thank you, Jazzy, for Go commentating. Thank you, Eternal, for reading donos and being here. Appreciate it. I hope you all have an excellent day, and I hope the rest of the runners have excellent luck for the rest of the run, unless it's funny. All right, thank you very much for that run. That was an amazing run of Quest 64 by Bing Cheng. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for the run. Coming up next, we've got a few, uh, looks like the 16-bit block. We got some Genesis and some Super Nintendo games coming up here on Summer Games Done Quick 2020 online. Thank you again for joining us, by the way. Our next game actually is uh, The Lion King on the Sega Genesis by 8. We're currently all right. We got a few more donations that have come on in. We've got a ten dollar anonymous donation that says Lion King hype. That is definitely coming up next. We have an anonymous. $25 donation that says keep up the good work. All right, coming up next, we have an interview, and also this will conclude my time here at the host desk. I'm going to pass it on over to Liz Starr, who will be taking you through these next few Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo runs. As mentioned, we have the Lion King by 8 coming up next. Liz Starr is going to take over the desk. It's been an absolute pleasure to host these runs with you, and I'll see you again here for me, it'll be early Wednesday morning. Take care, everybody, and Liz Star coming up next, and we've got another interview. 
Hey everybody, and thank you so much for watching Summer Games Done Quick. I am Yellow Killer Bee, and I have the absolute pleasure to be joined by Eight and Paul Saltine. They are going to both be running in the Disney block, which is coming up next. Now, you know that I am a huge Disney fan at heart, and I've actually played both of these games. So I'm really excited to be talking with these runners. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you, Eight? I'm doing fantastic. Excellent. So, I mean, I love Disney games. I, I'm assuming you guys probably have a love slash hate relationship with these <laughs> games at times. Um, but how did you get into speedrunning Disney games? Uh, we'll start off with Eight. How did you get into speedrunning The Lion King? Well, I actually was a big fan of the game as a kid. Um, I got to Scar and it's actually not very intuitive how to end the game. It doesn't tell you that you have to throw Scar off of Pride Rock, so I never finished it. So I kind of had unfinished business with the game. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend Nicole was running the Super Nintendo version. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if two friends were both running this game, but different versions of it? That's great. I can definitely relate to that kind of unfinished business uh, scenario with my own games. And how about you, Paul? How did you get into Castle of Illusion? Uh, it's kind of similar, honestly. Um, I didn't necessarily have this game as a kid, but my sister did. Um, so, I mean, as children, we didn't really make it very far in the game, to be honest. Uh, you know, level one, level two, uh, and whatnot. But after a while... Um, of not playing it, being an adult, streaming and whatnot, I had the cartridge, uh, the same cartridge I had as a kid. And one day for a stream, I was like, yo, let's just casually play this. I haven't touched it in like 20 years. Let's see, you know, let's see what kind of game it is. And I managed to beat it on stream for, you know, the first time ever. And I had like a lot of fun with it. So kind of kept going back with it, you know, getting a little bit better, a little bit better each time until we decided to just leap right on in. Yeah, it really kind of sneaks up on you with Castle Illusion. You're yeah. like, oh, you know, there's, there's not like, it, it doesn't seem like a huge amount of speed tech when you're playing it. And you're like, oh, what about the speed run? But it's just such a fun game to play. It, Absolutely. It really is. Uh, so, Eight, I want to know, like, you were running the Genesis version of The Lion King, and there's also a Super Nintendo version. So can you tell me a little bit about the difference between the two? A lot of people think they're exactly the same. Yeah, um, they're actually very different. The level layouts are all quite a bit different. Not all of them, but most of them are quite a bit different. Um, Simba is more floaty on the Genesis version, and just the physics in general are kind of different. There's a lot of differences, but you would have to really kind of dive deep into both of the games to notice the differences or like run one or the other, I suppose. Uh, also, Simba is a lot more vocal in the Super Nintendo <laughs> version of the game. Is that true? Cool. Yeah, he just says cool for everything. Just cool. 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 <laughs> I remember that. I actually haven't yeah. played the Genesis version, but yeah, for the Super Nintendo version, I, just, <laughs> I do remember that. So um, as I said, you know, the, the for the Lion King, I have tried it and it was really hard. Uh, a lot of these Disney games just seem to be very difficult, which is kind of a juxtaposition between, you know, you think it's this kid's game, this Disney game, uh, but yet you get into these games and it's like, wow, the the barrier to entry is just huge. And Eight, you were kind of talking about, um, you know, something that you had found out about why that was. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. The devs were instructed by Disney to make the game as difficult as possible so that people couldn't beat it from like a video store like Blockbuster or, you know, just a store of that ilk within one rental period. The idea was that they would have to rent it several times or eventually just buy the game. That's so crazy because it's, it's like not what you <laughs> would expect from a Disney game, but yet it makes for a really great speed run. So, um, Paul, when you're... Uh, playing Castle of Illusion, like the difficulty there is often in the movement. Like a lot of the things that seem kind of deceptively easy can be really hard. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I, unlike a lot of other speed games, Castle of Illusion doesn't have any crazy like clips or glitches or insane things that look like you know, off the walls hard or anything. Uh, the difficulty in Castle of Illusion kind of is in, yeah, those very simplistic movements so like, for example, the stage, the very first stage in Toyland, we call it the climb. 
just by looking at the speed run, it kind of just looks like you're walking to the top of this room. You know, you're climbing up some stairs, you're going to grab a key. But I mean, in actuality, what's going on is like each jump, each position of a jump where you land on a block, where you take damage, how you damage boost through enemies is all calculated and like just one mess up throws everything off the walls. And then you got to kind of try to, uh, you know, recover from that and find a backup to get up without dying or you know losing too much time it's very subtle yeah i can attest to that as well the climb ended many a run for me yeah in in my day and then uh so eight for the lion king the movement plays a big part in it as well but then there's also um some larger skips yep um in level eight which is called be prepared i do a clip and i skip the whole level right to the auto scroller at the end of it <laughs> Perfect. Just take care of that whole level. Just get rid of yep. it. <laughs> uh, so as we're kind of wrapping up here, I do want to kind of touch base and see how you guys are feeling coming into this run. Now, uh, eight, you do hold the world record in two of the categories for this game. And then Paul Saltine, you just got a PB last Thursday in basically what was your final practice uh, stream before yeah. GDQ. So so how are you kind of feeling uh, are you are you prepared, Eight? <laughs> Do you feel like you're prepared coming <laughs> into this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually I'm I'm confident. However, um I will be if I if my incentive gets met and I play difficult, um, I will be starting the game with zero lives. Hmm. So um there's a huge chance, well not a huge chance, but there's somewhat of a chance that I game over, but mm -hmm. it's fine. I'll be fine, mm -hmm. I'll be good, I'm confident. <laughs> oh, what about you, Paul? Uh, honestly, I'm probably as confident as I'm going to be. Uh, I mean, there's a big RNG aspect to the Castle of Illusion run as well. So uh, all I can do is execute what I can to the best of my ability and then see what the RNG gods give me. Mm -hmm. it, just all hope for good wa water RNG. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> for Paul. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, you guys, for chatting with me. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about your games. And for the rest of you, you're going to want to stick around because the Disney block is coming up next. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. My name is Listar, and I'll be your host for the upcoming Genesis block. I'm super excited, you know that I am. Uh, before we get to that, however, we're still getting set up for the next run. So don't go anywhere, friends. We're going to throw to a quick Twitch ad, and we'll be right back.
Hello, everybody. I was told that uh, this is Disney block and not Genesis block, but because we have a bunch of Genesis after it, as well as in here, it's a little block inside of a block. It's a super special mini block. Um, so let's go ahead and give one quick donation, uh, and then we can move over. We have a bunch of great... Uh, we have a bunch of uh, really great haikus coming up. Um, there was one. Oh, here, here. I really like this one, these, these poems. Uh, $100 from I Am Gibbon. There was a young man from York who got limericks and haikus confused. I like that. That was good. Uh, all right, so uh, give it up, friends. Next up is Eight with the Lion King. I am Eight. This is the Lion King for the Sega Genesis, and 